Good morning and welcome to another episode of GSC at Home. My name is Saba and today we're going to be thinking about food, energy and the amazing variety of life we have on planet Earth. Maybe you've just had your breakfast, some toast, cereal or porridge? There's a lot of wonderful food that humans can eat. We eat food to give us energy to make sure we grow up nice and strong and to keep our bodies healthy. Other animals eat a variety of different food too. If you have a pet dog or cat, you might feed them chicken, beef or another type of meat. These animals are carnivores and this is what they need to eat to stay healthy. If you have a rabbit or guinea pig, then you might feed them fruit and vegetables. These animals are herbivores and this is their preferred diet. There is a huge variety of food that the animals on earth eat. In the wild, there are lions that chase down impalas, pandas that munch on bamboo, koalas that select the best leaves of the eucalyptus trees, bears that catch fish, and whales that filter out teeny tiny plankton. If you want to learn more about food in nature, look back at the Food Chain Tai Chi video with Amy on a previous episode of GSC at Home. What about the residents of your garden or local park? How do plants and trees get their food? Well, plants are unable to collect or capture food like animals do, so they make their own food using a source of energy that is freely available every single day. Sunshine. Not very abundant in Scotland at times, but we still have a variety of plant life that thrives all over our wonderful country. Fun fact, there are carnivorous plants that eat insects. These include species such as the Venus flytrap, the pitcher plant and the delightfully named sundew. They have a series of special leaves that have adapted to trap and digest their prey and they use them to eat a variety of insects and even small animals like frogs. There are currently around 600 known species of carnivorous plants on planet Earth, but you're unlikely to see any lurking in your local park as they much prefer warm tropical climates. I can't say I blame them, but back to plants and sunshine. The process by which plants can use sunlight to make food is called photosynthesis. Photo meaning light and synthesis meaning to put together. As well as light, plants use a chemical in their cells called chlorophyll, carbon dioxide from the air and water from the ground to make your food. Let's look at each of these three components separately and find out their role in photosynthesis. Chlorophyll is a chemical that can absorb light energy. It absorbs all colours of visible light apart from green, which is why plants that contain chlorophyll are green. It is the only colour that is reflected. You may have noticed that some plants are not green. They might be more of a red or brown colour. This is because of coloured chemicals in the leaves called carotenoids, which are yellow and orange, and anthocyanin, which is red. If there are more of these chemicals than chlorophyll, the leaves will reflect more yellow, orange or red light than green light, and they will appear red-brown. Chlorophyll is still present but in much smaller quantities. Autumn leaves turn red, orange and yellow as green chlorophyll is broken down and its elements are absorbed to provide nutrients for the winter months. Carbon dioxide is a gas that is found in the air around us. Due to human activity, the percentage of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has increased over the past 100 years. This is more than any other time in human history. Carbon dioxide, as the name suggests, consists of the elements carbon and oxygen and looks like this. Plants take in carbon dioxide through tiny pores in their leaves called stoma and use it to make the food that they need. Water consists of the elements oxygen and hydrogen and looks like this. Plants take in water through their roots by capillary action. They can also absorb water through their leaves. The hydrogen in water is used to dry photosynthesis. Oxygen is also produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis and released into the air. Oxygen is extremely important to life on Earth. Just over 2 billion years ago, there was a vast increase in the level of oxygen in Earth's atmosphere, which enabled the evolution of more complex life forms. Today, oxygen supports that diversity of life on our planet. If a plant has a ready supply of these three things, light, carbon dioxide and water, it can produce the food it needs to survive, glucose. Glucose is a sugar that plays a vital role in providing chemical energy for most living organisms, including bacteria, plants and humans. It is made by plants during photosynthesis. We are now going to do an experiment which will hopefully allow us to see photosynthesis in action. For this, you will need two large leaves, two glasses or similar transparent containers, water, a cupboard or a box and a sunny windowsill. 
Make sure you collect your leaves either from your garden or during your usual walk outside. I collected mine from my garden. Also, it's important that you use a fresh leaf rather than one that you picked from the ground. This is because the leaf needs to be actively carrying out photosynthesis. Once you have collected everything you need, we need to pour water into both cups, filling them about 3 quarters of the weight. So that's the first cup and there you go, second cup. Now we're going to place a leaf into each of the cups. I'm going to submerge the leaf fully into the water. You can use a weight or a pebble to keep the leaf from floating. Fully inside the water. Now, we're going to place one in a cupboard and the other in a sunny windowsill and leave them there for a couple of hours. What do you think will happen to our leaves? What can you see in each of the cups? In the cup that was left in the dark, there's not much change. In the cup that was left in the sunshine, you should be able to see tiny bubbles forming on the surface of the leaves. These are bubbles of oxygen and they were released during photosynthesis. Amazing! Not all plants enjoy a lot of sunlight. Some plants thrive tucked under a tree in the shade. All plants need light, but depending on their leaves, they might not be able to tolerate the heat or UV rays associated with direct exposure to intense sunlight. I hope you had fun thinking about photosynthesis today and watching your leaves. Thank you for joining me on GSC at Home. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll try our very best to answer them. If you try this experiment at home, please share your pictures with us on our social media. We would love to see them. See you next time.